If you're watching this, then I'm guessing you've seen the previous video, and you couldn't get enough of the Brachial Plexus. In this video, we're going to be building on that illustration by looking at some of the smaller branches that leave the plexus. Now if you're drawing along, I'd recommend making your picture as big as possible, and giving yourself plenty of room to add in those extra nerves. I'd also recommend downloading this picture here, which I'll be using to illustrate which structures those nerves supply. First, we need to add a couple of branches that leave the plexus at the level of the root. Coming off C5, we have the dorsal scapular nerve. As the name suggests, this heads to the dorsum, or the back of the scapula, where it supplies the rhomboids and levator scapulae. We also have a nerve that originates from C5, 6, and 7. This is the long thoracic nerve, so called because it travels all the way down the mid axillary line of the chest to supply serratus anterior. If this nerve is damaged and serratus anterior stops working, then you can get winging of the scapula. Moving distally, we have two branches leaving the upper trunk. The nerve to subclavius is a nerve that goes to subclavius, and this is a small muscle that supports the clavicle. The other branch is the suprascapular nerve. As you might expect, the suprascapular nerve supplies supraspinatus, but it also innervates the infraspinatus muscle. Both of these muscles are an important part of the rotator cuff, that group of muscles that provide dynamic support to the shoulder joint. But remember, they also have individual actions, and if supraspinatus stops working, then they'll struggle to initiate abduction of the shoulder joint. Finally, we need to look at the cords. Three nerves are going to leave the posterior cord. The upper subscapula, the lower subscapula, and between them, the thoracodorsal nerve. The upper and lower subscapular nerves both supply subscapularis. The thoracodorsal, meanwhile, passes down the back of the chest to innervate latissimus dorsi. Now, there are plenty of ways to learn the branches of the posterior cord, but personally, I like to use the phrase ultra. For that upper and lower subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal, and then the radial and axillary branches that we saw in the previous video. Admittedly, if you want to learn the order of these nerves, then the lower subscapula and thoracodorsal need to switch around, but I can see how utlera doesn't have quite the same ring to it. The lateral cord have just one branch, the lateral pectoral nerve. This supplies the clavicular head of pectoralis major. So, what supplies the sternal head? Well, for that, we have the medial pectoral nerve. This originates from the medial cord and also supplies pec minor. The last two branches leave the medial cord to supply skin on the medial aspect of the arm and forearm. I've said it before and I'll say it again anatomists are not that creative, and so these are known as the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and forearm. And with that, we've drawn all of the branches of the brachial plexus. In a future video, I'm going to look at those five major branches and see where they go into the upper limb and what they supply. But until then, thank you for watching, take care, keep washing your hands, and I'll hopefully see you soon. Cheers.